In this video, we're going to take a look at shading particle instances when rendering with Octane for Maya. And the scene that I'm using for this video is called particles underscore 01. And it simply has a cube that has been instanced to a basic particle simulation in Maya using Nucleus. So let's switch to Octane. And you can see the moment the cubes just have a basic glossy material applied to them. So let's select the original cube instance so that we can go into the attribute editor and find the attributes for the glossy material that's been applied to it. So I'm going to click on the checker box next to diffuse. This will open up the create render node window and I want to find under geometric the random color texture. So this is specifically meant to shade particle instances. So if I click on it, you can see that what's being applied is a random grayscale value to each instance. So let's rewind the scene and play it a little bit. And then when I pause, you'll see the particles update. So as I'm playing through the scene and pausing, we can see the particles here. And you can see how they get random values between zero and one or black and white. So if I open up Hypershade, I'll graph the material on the cube. And zoom in a little bit so we can see there's the random color texture going into the diffuse input of the glossy material. So of course you can use this as an input for other textures. So for example, if I decided to, so if I add a mixed texture, for instance, I can plug this into the amount for the mixed texture, so that's going into the amount. And then for the two textures here, I'm going to add a couple RGB spectrum textures. So I'll make a red one, go back to my mixed texture node, and I'll add a green image or green color. Of course, now when we wind and play the scene, Oh, nothing's going to happen because I forgot to plug in the mix texture into my glossy material. So let's do that real quick. Select the glossy material and let's bring this over to diffuse. And now you can see that we're getting random mixes between red and green. So the ones that are in between are getting shaded yellow. And then on the either extreme, we either get red or green. And then everything in between applied completely randomly thanks to the random color texture. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Let's take a look at some other nodes. I'm gonna move these off to the side here. Let's disconnect it from the diffuse channel of the glossy material. And we'll go back to the geometric section. So now let's add the Octane Instance Range Texture. So I will plug this into the diffuse channel. And if we play the scene, we get either white cubes or black cubes. So we need to edit the one and only setting found in the instance range texture, which is the minimum ID. So if I increase this, let's say we'll put it to 25, then you can see now we're getting a wider range of values between 0 and 1. So it's based on the number of instances. So we start out with dark shaded cubes and the more we play the simulation and the more instances that appear, the lighter they get. So it starts dark and it keeps going light. So if we increase this value, if we set it up to like 500, it would take a much longer time to go from the dark instances to the light instances, depending on how many instances there are in the scene. So you can kind of think of it as a gradient. Um, so of course this can be also be plugged in to a mixed texture. So if we go back to our network here, I'm going to select my mixed texture and this time I'm going to replace the amount with the instance range texture and then let's put this into the diffuse. And now we start out with mostly red cubes. So I'll just pause it every once in a while as we're playing it. And gradually they become yellow and eventually they'll start to become green.
So that's instance range. And then the other texture we want to take a look at is the instance color texture. We'll click on this, and this actually takes an image input. So let's plug this into the diffuse channel. And for the image, I'm using this image, which I created in Photoshop, which basically shows square image with purple, red, green, and blue. And you can see it's going from light to dark. So what's going to happen is I play the simulation. It's going to start down here with this corner and apply this pixel value to the first instance, and then this one to the next one, and this one to the next one, and so on, all the way across the bottom here until it gets to this side of the image. And then it's going to start over again with this row, and then with this row, and then this row. And it's going to keep doing it going up. So eventually we'll start to see some green instances going to dark blue. Uh, depends on how many instances you have in the scene. It also depends on the resolution of your input image. If this is a very large uh, image in terms of resolution, then it's going to take a long time to shift between colors as opposed to a very low resolution image. But let's uh, select that Octane Instance Color Texture, click on the folder, find that color grid picture, and use that. And as we would exist, and then I'll play the scene, pause it every few seconds so we can see we're getting mostly pink, and they're gradually going to start to get darker and redder. So we can see they're starting to get darker as we move across. So one thing we can do is let's take our uh, emitter here and let's increase the rates particles per second to say 100. And then start to play the scene and pause it every few seconds. And you can see now we have more instances so we're moving through the colors of that image much more quickly. So there you go. There's some of the textures that you can use when rendering particle instances with Octane for Maya.